The shiny gold label shouting 4K is everywhere. TVs, computer monitors, it will probably even end up on your smart fridge next, but what is the difference between 4K and bog standard 1080p and do you even need to be using it? Find out in today's video. Let's start right from the beginning and explain what resolution actually is. Images on a screen are portrayed by millions of tiny LEDs displaying red, green and blue light, all working in tandem to portray an image when viewed at a distance. These groups of red, green and blue lights are known as pixels. It's possible to mix varying amounts of red, green and blue per pixel and per area of pixels to generate millions of different colours at different levels of brightness. The number of pixels horizontally and vertically is our resolution. There are industry standard resolutions, although technically anything is possible. The most common video resolution formats are HD, which measures 1280 pixels horizontally by 720 vertically, Full HD, which measures 1920 by 1080, and Ultra HD, which has 3840 by 2160. 4K resolution is actually a cinema standard and provides a more widescreen image than Ultra HD or UHD, measuring at 4096 pixels by 2160, giving this letterboxing effect at the top and bottom of the footage when viewed on a standard 16 by 9 display. Anyway, the general rule is that the more pixels there are to make up an image, the clearer the perceived image is. One last thing to cover before we jump into the deep end is, what does 1080p actually mean? There's a good chance you've probably seen this number written somewhere, maybe even in the settings of the YouTube player on this video that you're watching. Well, we can use this shorthand way to describe all of the industry standard resolutions. The number in 1080p describes the vertical height of the image, so in this case, full HD measures 1080 pixels high, and the P means progressive. An image doesn't just appear on your screen, it has to be rendered onto the screen by turning certain pixels up and down in intensity. The pixels on the first row of the screen turn on, left to right, displaying all the correct colours until the entire row has been completed, at which point it moves on to the row below. Repeat this 1080 times, right down to the bottom row of the screen, and you'll have a complete image. This entire process takes place for one frame of video, and it's then repeated many times per second, corresponding to the frame rate of your video. It's also possible to see the resolution written as 1080i, which means interlaced. In this case, the odd rows of pixels are drawn first, rows 1, 3, 5, and so on, and then once the whole screen has rendered the odd lines, the even lines are drawn. This requires 50% less bandwidth when transmitting video as the work is split between two alternating runs of pixel renders. The Slow Mo Guys YouTube channel did a great video on what this looks like if you slow it down, it's really fascinating. Most cameras below a certain budget will allow for 1080p resolution, often referred to as Full HD, which is great as most people have screens which support up to 1080p resolution. 1080p is generally regarded as being clear enough for most use cases as a final export in video production, whether it's for television or online content and so on. 4K has only been around for the last few years and it's still not supported on all platforms, mainstream television included. Whilst Netflix, Amazon Prime and other video on demand services have moved to 4K, terrestrial television such as Sky only supports 4K on an on-demand basis, not for regular TV content. Even nowadays, not everyone has a 4K television and the difference is small enough for most consumers that it's not worth the broadcasters making the upgrade just yet. So, considering most people seem relatively happy consuming 1080p content, should you shoot your videos in 1080p or 4K? The first thing you should consider is future-proofing. Whilst 1080p is the norm for many people nowadays, as the cost of producing more advanced technology comes down over time, more people will begin to upgrade their TVs and computer monitors, meaning they can now take advantage of higher resolution content. If your camera supports 4K, then even if you're recording at 1080p for now, you won't have to invest in further equipment in the future to keep up with the technological changes. There's also an advantage to be had in recording video in a higher resolution than the intended export resolution. When recording a video in 4K, you're recording four times more pixels than 1080p, two times more horizontally and two times more vertically. 
When it comes to the editing stage, you can then theoretically zoom in up to 200% of the original video size before you begin to lose quality due to the reduced number of remaining pixels in the frame. This is why cameras offer 6K video resolution, such as the one we're currently using, with some even offering up to 8 or 12K resolution. The benefit of this is that if you're working on a 4K timeline, you can zoom in and still maintain full 4K resolution if the recorded media is of a higher resolution. In the case of our 6K camera, we can zoom in a full 150% before we're down to a resolution of 4K, meaning our recordings can still be super crisp even if we have to reframe the footage in post-production. But before we jump into the negatives of 4K video, can you actually tell the difference? Now, it's worth noting that this will only work on a 4K display, so if you're watching on a phone or a full HD monitor or TV, you won't see the difference between 4K and full HD. The footage that's currently playing on the screen is switching between 720p, 1080p and 4K, with clip A being one resolution, B being another and the same with C. Can you tell which is which resolution? As they're all the same piece of footage, maybe you can. But what if we drop random resolution changes throughout an edit? The footage you're now watching is changing resolution with each clip. Can you tell which is which now? The difference may be smaller or larger depending on what is being filmed. Sometimes it's glaringly obvious, other times not so much. An interesting test nonetheless. Let's talk about some of the downsides of using 4K video. Firstly, the costs involved. Although 4K cameras are currently cheaper than ever, the purchase price of a camera is not the only cost involved with moving up to 4K resolution. To start with, you're recording more data. As I mentioned earlier, 4K is four times the resolution of 1080p, meaning you're going to be consuming four times as much digital data when recording to storage media, whether that's an SD card, SSD or CFast card. If you were originally able to get an hour's recording time at Full HD, you're going to be down to 15 minutes if you film at 4K, and perhaps only five minutes if you record at even higher resolutions such as 6K. Even so, higher resolution footage is still affordably small if you record with industry standard compressed codecs such as H.264 or 265. It's only when you begin to get into raw video formats which allow much more flexibility in post-production and are hugely bigger in file size that storage issues become a true issue. I can speak from experience here. As well as more storage space, you'll also need more computing power. When working with 4K video, you're processing four times more pixels per frame than 1080p, and so you'll need four times more processing power to keep up the same performance. Which format of video and which software you use determines which component is likely to experience the most strain. However, also having powerful components throughout the entire computer will never go amiss. A decent processor, plenty of RAM and a powerful graphics card will all help towards making the edit run more smoothly. You should also bear in mind that a simple benchmark test may not provide real-world performance results. Just running a 4K video in an editing timeline is very, very different from the state of the timeline when the final edit has been completed. You may need to run more than one stream of 4K footage at once, add transitions, titles and effects, and all of these take up valuable processing power. So it's usually a good idea to overspec your PC for future-proofing as your projects become larger and more complex. It's interesting to note that Mac computers are extremely efficient with H.265 and ProRes video formats, as they have built-in decoders within the physical hardware, which allow for huge projects in up to 8K resolution to run in real time, even on a base model MacBook laptop, when using these particular codecs. 
Please let me know whether you think 4K video is worth the extra investment. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. To find out about the best affordable mobile workstation for editing video, make sure to watch our review of the MacBook Pro M1 Pro, which will be on your screen in just a moment. Thanks for watching and you'll see us in the next video.